couple of messages about tonight, how things are going to go. The first is that this is not a stiff formal invitation. I thought about doing a real stiff speech when I started and then slowly <laughs> taking off all my clothes and I thought, maybe that would warm things up a little bit, but no. <laughs> Uh, so tonight we're going to hear a, a lot of information and a lot of uh, stories and a lot of tributes. Some of, uh, uh, and I guarantee that this is going to be an extraordinary experience for everyone, including you. I hope you brought the crime tell, tell. So, you know, how many people here were in drama class with Jack? That's wonderful. <laughs> All right, so you know how we're going to start. On your feet, let's go. Oh, oh nice. <laughs> okay, first, wheel the hands. Get the hands up there, stretch it out. All right, and sound. Good, bounce a little, bounce a little, bounce a little bit. Good, good, good. good. A little warm, that's a little better. Now we got some uh, we got some wonderful singers for this thing. We're going to be moving around, uh, giving it to us musically, letting things go a little bit. <clears throat> we also got some uh, tremendous multimedia that uh, has been put together by Rick Corlett and his students, and uh, you're going to see a lot of pictures from the day. They're also, uh, it, it's, uh, it, it's kind of not traditional to tell you about the folks who are bringing you your show tonight, but uh, the truth matters is by the time this is all over, everyone's going to want to run out here right away, so I better tell them up front and acknowledge everybody up front. I'd like to introduce our producer, uh, uh, Steve. Where are you, buddy? Get it back here. Steve Jr. Steve is on the Alumni Association group, and uh, when this happened, he uh, he came to each of us who were on the committee and said, we're going to do this for Jack, and we'd really like you to be involved. And uh, <laughs> those of us who were weak of mind said yes, and we are do that right away. <laughs> but, you know, we're all, we're all, everybody's honored and pleased to be part of this. The other folks on the committee, uh, Jeannie Frazier. The fellow who keeps sending you 10 million emails, Jeff Swing. I think we're yes, that's right. Yes, stock and Facebook. That's what all that was about. And uh, also for our food and drink tonight, uh, Donna Altman, who was not a student but an alumni member, who said, "I will stand up and I will do this for you guys." Donna Altman. Uh, Naturally. And uh, uh, who does that mean? I guess that's me. Uh, when when uh, Steve first came to me and said, Gil, huh? Don't forget Mr. I'm sorry, Steve. The, the hog and trailing spouse. Oh, yes, of course, Robert. <laughs> Where are you? There you are, you're hiding right there, right next to your wife. Yes. <laughs> Uh, Kurt was not on the original committee, Jack. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. But thank you for that reminder. Now, we had a deal. You're not saying anything to me. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get out of here before 11. It's good. It's good. <laughs> anyway, the story is that when, when uh, Steve Groom first came to me and said, would you do this with Jack, it would happen to be at a time in my life that I was incredibly committed and uh, dealing with some some uh, family emergencies, elderly parents, and things of that nature. And I, it, it, was, it was not, I, I thought, how can I possibly even think about doing such a thing? Then I went back to the day when uh, I had told this to Jack. That was the luckiest day of my life. And it was the day I met this man.
he set in motion in my life and in me something that carried me through my whole of my life. And we'll hear more about that later. I think from a lot of people, you'll hear that. So anyway, let's have a little music. Yeah. everybody moving and losing their chairs. This is Gil Savage, who graciously stepped up to the plate, who was in Jack's first drama class, oh. who stepped up to the plate Woo. and said, I will direct this thing, and I'm, we're going we're gonna to do it. The show will go on. Yeah. I'll tell you, uh, last Tuesday, it was the first time I stood on the stage since 1966. It hasn't changed. It still feels good. Yeah, it was really amazing. It was like it left 10 minutes ago. It was truly astonishing. Okay, now uh, I'm going to ask Dave Maker to come up and lead us in a song. He's got some great stuff going. Come on, Dave. Some of you remember we agreed to a little room. Your backup. <laughs> and I need it. <laughs> you have the cool, clear eyes of a seeker of wisdom and truth. Yet there's that up. Turn, chin, and the grin of impetuous youth. Oh, I believe in you. I hear the sound of good, solid judgment whenever you talk. Yet there's that brave. Bold spring in the spark of that tiger that walks. Oh my god. is that you talk about how the individual, how it all started. So, <clears throat> I have here 45 pages of notes from the day <laughs> Jack was born. Guess who wrote the notes? Okay, fine. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, it all started for Jack on a cold February day in Detroit in 1932. In case you're a little slow in your arithmetic, that makes him a year short of 80. 
That's hard to believe. He attended Harding Elementary School. Get that? Okay, good. And Redford High School in Detroit. Now, Redford was noted as a school where George C. Scott attended, as well as Michael Dunn, the dwarf actor who starred in Ship of Fools. So obviously, it was something in the water. They didn't have a drama class, but Redford afforded him his first theatrical experience. The Men's Glee Club put on a minstrel show to raise money for the March of Dimes. He has two music teachers to thank for that, Howard Love and Jim Fenby. In high school, he played football and ran track. He lettered in football and ran 120 yard low hurdles, of course, <laughs> ran the second leg in the 880 relay. After high school, he attended Wayne State University, or Wayne State, for three semesters. He said Wayne was his first initiation into drama. He played the murder in the cathedral and much ado about nothing, as well as a student directed one act play called August Heat. The Korean War broke out, and the administration came out with an order that you could withdraw from any class without penalty if you enlisted in the service. That was for him. He figured out that there would be a Korean GI Bill as well. He spent four years in the Navy from 51 to 55, and received four years of sustenance. In the Navy, he spent time in Jacksonville, Florida, Memphis, Tennessee, and a year in ADAC, Alaska. <laughs> which explains his aversion to snow. <laughs> he then came to San Diego and duty as an, on, on an aircraft carrier. In the Navy, he had two boxing matches. How'd those go, Jack? I've never heard that. Lost them both. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I asked him. <laughs> he did his first two plays at the Old Globe Theater while he was in the Navy. Mr. Roberts in 1953 and Stalock 17 in 1954. Quick aside, Jack, I remember my first show at the Globe seeing pictures from those shows in the old uh, tavern. Seven others, plays followed for a total of nine in all. Sleep Prisoners, The Balcony, Little Murders, Loot, A Delicate Balance, and Poor Murderer. In 65, he was in a second production of Mr. Roberts, the only actor ever to do that in both productions. Jack enrolled in San Diego, State's, uh, San Diego State College, where he met Bill Adams. <laughs> this, you typed this, okay, fine. 95, got it, okay. He met Bill Adams, whom he considered his best teacher and director, the best he ever had. With Bill, he did Mice and Men, Oedipus Rex, and Reader's Theater production of The Grapes of Wrath, which took him to London, no less. At State, he directed another Kearney graduate, Cleavon Liddy, who won a Tony Award for Pearly and a movie, and became a movie star in Mel Brooks' Blazing Saddles, great film. Jack has performed at San Diego City College in Richard II, Tamburlaine Lane, Tamburlaine, Tamburlaine the Great, and The Mad Woman of Shio. He was in 10 Little Indians at the Lambs Players. He's been in productions with Raquel Welch. <laughs> John Ireland, Robert Hayes, and Ed Flanders. Jack received a master's degree in stage direction with the production of the House of Bernard of Olba, which his uh, mentor and professors told him was the best production ever done of the House of Bernard of Olba there. So, that's Jack's history up to 1963, <laughs> when it began. And I'd like to ask our two, first two moderators to stand up and come forward. And we'll pick it up with 1963, Jack. I'm Roja Hallman. I'm Freddie Jenkins.
same as it did back in our time. <laughs> <laughs> a year that anyone who was here at that time, and a lot of you weren't, it was a year that we will never forget. JFK was assassinated and it shook us all to the core. I'll never forget it, I was right here at the school. Dr. King gave his I Have a Dream speech and rekindled our hope and our dreams. We listened to the Beach Boys, groove to Motown, dance the swim, the Watusi, and the jerk. It was a time of turmoil and radical change. It was the beginning of what we were, the, the Boomers. boomers. <laughs> Jack was the brand spanking new drama teacher and had a strong talent pool from day one. His starting choice was a thriller. Night Must Fall with Orosha Horvath, Gil Savage, Mike Byers, and Ivy Minahan in the leads. In the spring of 64, Jenny kissed me, surfacing more talent that showed the depth of that pool. Freddie Jenkins, Candice Balistrieri Chappelle added their marks in a big cast doing a classic comedy. Starting the tradition of competition that would characterize Jack's career, we took riders to the sea to the state one-act tournament, and we lost because the judges said that we didn't keen like the Irish wake. <laughs> we keened at home instead. But Jack laid his plans for the next year, and he wanted to win. 1964 to 65. The Beatles arrived on the scene on Ed Sullivan. It was what we did on Sunday nights. The Civil Rights Act was passed, and fires were lit for the boomers to become a future power for change. We rocked out to a hard day's night and pretty woman. You've lost that love and feeling, and G-L-O-R-I-A, Gloria. We danced the frug and the monkey. We learned that you can't take it with you. Actually, another comedy classic, Karen Kavanaugh's Surface. And Freddie was back for more. Pygmalion was excellent, and so was Mike Byers as Professor Higgins. Candace Chappelle and Sherry Craven were strong, alternating Eliza Doolittles. Gil Savage and Ivy Minahan set the bar early for character acting. Debbie Costenborder and Pat Cabanis were supporting as well as host as a host of troopers. Then it was back to the San Diego State Tournament, and this time to win with the devil and Daniel Webster. Gil and Ivy both walked away with scholarships and Jack had his first one in the bag. The start of a winning tradition that marked Kearney and Jack as the big dogs in high school drama. <laughs> Sixty-five was rumbling with the Watts riots in, the El in Los Angeles. The U.S. sent thousands of troops to Vietnam, and we started to wake up to the meaning of war. The protests began. Papa had a brand new bag. We had a ticket to ride, but we were whining that we just couldn't get any satisfaction. <laughs> First, we danced the hanky panky, then we shimmied until they made us stop. <laughs> then we did the dog until they threw us out of the gym. So we went home and watched the very first episodes of Star Trek. George Washington slept here was a hit. 
and kept the classic comedy role going. Gail Savage, Mike Byers, and Candace Chappelle worked the leads. They were the comedy gang here at Curtin. My three angels kept the comedy rolling. Do we see a pattern here? Jack McDowell, Linda Bryant, Bryant, and Tony Tate took leads, along with Gail Savage. ILS took a superior rating at State, and the house of Bernardo Alba got a top seeder rating of 97 out of 100. 1966 through 67 was the first Super Bowl. Vietnam raged there, and protests raged here. Things were getting pretty tense. We were in a purple haze, or was it strawberry fields forever? The doors lit our fire, and Aretha socked it to us with R-E-S-P-E-C-T. We danced the chicken and the pony. And Mrs. Wiseman said, we acted like a bunch of animals. <laughs> Jack turned the party to serious with member of the wedding. He told us then, and it never changed, that he was committed to doing the classics, the ones with eternal lessons by great playwrights. And every one of us who was privileged to work with him on this stage were the beneficiaries of that commitment. And so were the ones out there in the seats. Debbie Gillian, Kathy Callahan, and Mike Carey took the leads. Harvey brought new faces. Dave Maker, Mike Gonzalez, Doug Sawyer joined Karen Cavanaugh. A Midsummer Night's Dream was the beginning of a great tradition that was a lighthouse for many of us for many years. Shakespeare. Jack would find another way to distinguish Kearney drama, and this was the beginning of a fantastic run on the works of the Bard. Karen Cavanaugh, Jeff Swain, Dave Maker, Cheryl Crabb, Tom Salazar, Libby Zumiga, Terry Hakes, and others got their first taste. 1967 to 1968. We were struck again. This time Bobby Kennedy and Martin Luther King were murdered. We found out we were born to be wild as we were sitting on the dock of the bay, waiting to hear it through the grapevine. And we could say, hey Jude, let's go to the love in. We did the mash. We did the monster mash. Then we decided to just do the mashed potato. This led, of course, to the Bristol Stomp. Hair opened and changed forever what we thought musical theater is. The age of Aquarius felt good. Fantastics was the first time Jack did this show. And we got to see Forrest Buckman, Guy Quispard, Michelle Ercuaga, and Murray Bakich make their first of many appearances. The new talent pool was proving to be, the, to be very deep and broad. The Taming of the Shrew was the next Shakespeare production. Leads were Forrest Buckman, Anne-Marie Bockett, Terry Coons, Evan Ziegler, Dave Maker, Dan Lawler, Kathy Callahan, Jeff O'Leary, and Steve Grubbs. It went to the Shakespeare competition and made the semifinals. Not bad for the first time at bat. Our Town was a classic production of a great American play. Michelle Arquiaga, Terry Coombs, Guy Quistegard, Thomas Ally, Jan Reynolds, and Tom Shaver carried the load. Miss Julie went to the Mesa Scene Competition and won a superior rating. Forrest and Sherry Cramp both won scholarships. Pirandello's The Vice went to the completion, I'm sorry, I think, of, yeah, competition at the Pasadena Playhouse. Forrest won Best Actor for that one. And now I have to vote. Yes. And now, Roche has, has been involved in theater since she was a child actress in her early days at Hungary in, at age four. Settling in San Diego after her family's escape during the 1956 Hungarian Revolution, and after having learned English, she performed at the Old Globe, Cassius Carter, San Diego Rep, Coronado Playhouse, Pacific, excuse me, California Pacific Theater, and she traveled with the Reader's Theater Institute. In Los Angeles, Roche's work took her as an actor, director, costume and makeup designer, and she's been seen at the Cass Theater, the Celebration Theater, Pierce College's main and arena stages, and the Colony 
where she also served on its executive board and performed in numerous productions there. She also received a Robbie Award for her performance in Execution of Justice. Roja has directed and designed more than 60 productions. She's most recently directed The Diviners at a North, in a North Hollywood as their artistic director for her own theater company called the Human Arts Theater Company. She's taught all levels of acting, directing, costume and makeup design. She just retired recently from Pierce College in June of 2010, although she still teaches part-time there. She's also the proud mother of a 23-year-old son who is a professional ballroom dancer. Roshka is glad to be sharing the stage with one of her first inspirational teachers in the theater arts. Hi, Jack. <laughs> I may call you Jack, since the older I get, the closer in age to you I seem to be. <laughs> I was in your first drama class here at Kearney, and I knew you then as Mr. Winans. Oh God, it seems like a lifetime ago. <laughs> I remember how anxious we all were about this new teacher, and we all so hoped that you would fit the shoes of the person who had just left, and you not only fit his shoes, but exceeded expectations as witnessed by this wonderful tribute to you. You know, one of my favorite quotes is, to teach is to touch a life forever. And you certainly did that. I did not see myself as a teacher way back then, but based on the teachers who have touched my life and you being one of them, that is what I too became, a teacher. And a teacher of the subject matter that you love, theater. As you've heard, I just retired from Pierce College in Woodland Hills, and like you, I not only taught theater classes, but directed, wrote, costume, and makeup design, and like you, I learned to multitask. And so, if to teach is to touch a life forever, you have touched mine. And I know I didn't appreciate it back when we were here in the 60s. I didn't appreciate what you all did, you and your lovely wife. Now I know and truly appreciate and marvel at how you did it, because I followed in your footsteps. If I were to grade you, I would give you an A plus in my book for your ability to multitask and for managing often disinterested adolescents. <laughs> Another A for your ability to find humor in grave situations and to draw energy from mysterious sources in doing all of the arts of theater with very little assistance, but luckily with the assistance of your lovely wife, Bobby. You get another A for being clairvoyant, for seeing past the restlessness of adolescence, and you get an A++ for the ability to do the impossible, getting young actors to pay serious attention when they don't want to, and most of all, for the ability to change people's lives, sharing the excitement of learning and spreading the love of theater with students and colleagues alike. And I'm sorry to be so long here, but I'll never forget standing on this stage with this lovely woman who's my friend still. Can you imagine back at 64, we're still friends. And you wrote an assembly for us. It was a patriotic assembly the whole school had to see. And Freddie was the daughter of the DAR member. And I was the newly arrived immigrant, which I was who swore under the open skies of her new country to do what? I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> and then I had the privilege of seeing you in a play. I think it was called Sleep of Prisoners in Babel Park. And I was smitten. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. 
Yes. Oh, it's going to be on video. I can, yes. Guy Quicksguard works as a psychiatric hospital administrator for Alameda County Medical Center. He's been in the field of treating mental illness as an administrator and clinician for 32 years. He's been married for 18. He has two daughters, ages 17 and 14, both of who are accomplished students, musicians, and he is still an avid guitar player and singer. Hello, Jack. I'm so glad that the Tribute Committee reached out to me and asked if I would share a few thoughts about you and the impact you had on me as a teacher. Uh, I'm Guy Quiskard, in case you don't recognize me. Uh, but i got to tell you what an impact your teaching was to me. I have many fond memories of my times in a marquee club and the drama class, the many productions I participated in, including Our Town, uh, The Fantastics, Taming of the Shrew, with Ann Backage, Forrest Buckman, and Jeff O'Leary. Now those were talented actors. But most importantly, my most cherished memories are of the profound life lessons I learned from you. As much as we teased you about that half smile you always had on your face and your way of shaking your head at us uh, like a bobblehead doll, uh, I now realize uh, that your smile was a smile of acknowledgement and kindness and your nods were nods of knowing that while we might not understand the lessons of the playwright on that particular day, one day we would. Jack, you taught me many things. The three most profound, however, were first, follow your passion. And as a result of your lesson, I find myself smiling each day as I go to work. I'm doing work that I'm thrilled to do. And for the past 32 years, I've worked helping to provide services for the mentally ill as both a clinician and a hospital administrator. Uh, the next lesson I learned from you was speak from the heart. And while I wasn't the most talented actor you trained, I did learn this lesson, and it has grown inside me since graduating from Kearney in 1970. Because of what you taught me, I'm able to translate my passion into words from the heart and fighting stigma against mental illness in my field. Uh, you'd be proud uh, to have witnessed a recent speech that I gave about mental illness whereupon uh, delivering the last line, the crowd of 300 stood and cheered. You taught me how to speak from my heart. The final and most powerful lesson you taught me is to remember that the time we spend with loved ones is very precious. You had a little help with that one from Thornton Wilder uh, with this lesson, but between the two of you, uh, I got it. The scene that I remember most was when Emily Webb, one of the characters, goes back to, uh, to visit her family after dying to relive one day, her 12th birthday. A Force Buckman was the stage manager character, and he warned her in that scene that it would be painful. But she returned and quickly learned that the living can't appreciate the wonder of life that surrounds them every day, every moment. This lesson that you gave all of us who were in that play continues to affect me to this day. It's a lesson that I share with my wife, with my children, and my friends. Jack, you made my life better. You taught me lessons of life 41 years ago that drive my actions today. And for all you've given me and the grateful students that you see gathered here tonight, thank you. The miracles of modern science, my God. And now to introduce Freddie, Frederica Jenkins, my good friend. Her last stint here was doing student teaching in history and drama under the tutelage of Jack. Uh, Freddie has been a librarian all over the country. Children's libraries, college libraries, public libraries, and she gets to share her love of children's literature with her granddaughter, Hero, and grandson, River. Returning to her Ohio roots 11 years ago, Freddie now works with community college students in advising. She has directed and acted in community theater in Spokane, Washington, and Kalispell, Montana. And if you are really nice to her, she will tell you her favorite roles that she has both performed in, or performed and directed. So be sure to ask her afterwards, okay? Big secret. Good evening. <laughs> Rosha has always been the serious one. And I, 
more of a lighthearted one. Thank you, Jack, for allowing me the opportunity to spar with you. It was fun and ultimately educational. Let's see, it was the first year he was here. The know-it-all sophomore girl, translate insecure, all about me, meets a new energetic and creative drama teacher and the sparks flew. <laughs> Looking back now and having worked with high school and college actors, I heard you, Jack, and I heard myself. To spar, gesture without landing a blow. I forgot about your boxing history. Yes. Engage in a practice bout to wrangle. On guard, Jack. Spar is also a noun. A stout, rounded wood or metal piece used to support rigging. So, thanks for the practice and for providing the rigging. Amazing, talented man. Um, sang, danced, acted. There was nothing he couldn't do. Um, I just ran into him at my company's uh, play. He brought his daughter, and it was like, oh my God, how long has it been? You know that we've seen each other. Do you have his number? We do. Okay. Um, I got to see him at San Diego State playing many leads. Uh, just brought the house down. Um, I remember Michael Candy, you, and several other people dancing at my house at, at my 17th or 18th birthday. It was so long ago. Um, we kind of lost touch. Freddie is the only one that I have kept in touch with. Um, how many of you know Michael Byers out there? Amazing talent, isn't he? Yes. God, I'll never forget his little chat when he stopped the world. I want to get off at San Diego State. And then here, well, we'll find out where some of the shows that he did. What are your, well, no, you, you're not supposed to talk today, so I'm not going to get you going. <laughs> what do you remember about Mike? He was, he was so talented and graceful. Yeah, uh, he could flexible. Dance. And above all, just a good guy. You could trust him on stage as you could with that guy over there, Gil. And even at that early age, you know, I, you were, I just wasn't afraid. I just, we trusted each other and we could just go with it because we had so much improv experience. It was just great. You ready? Oh, good. Oh, good. Thank you. <laughs> Hello. Hello, everybody. So Hello. Good. Michael Hyer here. Hello, yeah, Michael. I was really looking forward to being a part of this wonderful evening, but uh, due to uh, the honor Jack that because of an illness with my wife, I'm not able to be there, but I am there in spirit, and I wanted to be a part of it even by phone. So um, when it was this whole thing started, I, I was thinking a lot about my high school experience, and, and I only remember having a great time, and most of that had to do with the theater department. I had a wonderful friend and a support, a supportive friend and a, a drama teacher who was incredibly enthusiastic about theater and teaching. That would be you, Jack. You taught us that performing could be used in many ways and expanded our vision by having us do dramatic and poetic and church competitions. I never imagined I would be doing poetry in public, but I did, and I had a lot of fun. <laughs> the one act competition, and we began a musical theater review where we were able to pick the things that we wanted to do and then choreograph and direct those sequences. And because of you, you built Kearney's reputation and made it easier for all of us when we graduated to go on and do the work that we all wanted to do. You also challenged us to think beyond our boundaries and cast us in things that no one else would. I remember playing a grandfather at 17, and now I am one. <laughs> <laughs> but 
which I never thought I'd be, but I am one. And you told me that the character parts were far more interesting than the romantic leads, and so I made a career out of doing many of those. One thing I am very grateful for you, for what you did for me, is that you encouraged us to audition for things outside of school. And because of that, I began a wonderful life-changing 11th season relationship with the Old Globe and Craig Knoll at 18, when I was still in high school. I always appreciated the fact that you would come and see us perform after we had left school, and you have always been interested in what we were up to and what was going on in our lives, and I appreciated that too. The phone calls, you would call me and wanted to know what was happening with me at home, as well as what I was doing with my life. One time you told me that when jobs weren't coming to find, well, jobs weren't coming, was to find creative ways to give my gifts. So when I married and adopted my children, I couldn't be on the road anymore, so I remembered what you said, and we created three CDs, and I began performing with motivational speakers and doing events for AIDS and self-esteem conferences for children and adults. I had the time of my life doing what I loved, and it was because I remembered what you told me at that time was to create my own. And what is also inspiring about you, Jack, is that you continue to find ways to participate in theater. And now at my, my more than advanced age, my kids are all, almost grown, and I think I will follow in your footsteps and continue doing the work that I love. You deserve to have the theater attorney named after you. You created something exciting and adventurous and inspired a large number of students to follow their hearts and do what they love. Thank you for inspiring me, and I look forward to hearing about all that you are doing and sharing with you my journey as well. And I really wish I could be there with all my friends. I'm sure there are many there. And I send you all my love, and I look forward to seeing you sometime in the future. And thank you so much for calling me and including me in this. I'm really grateful. I'll talk to you all later. In case you don't know, there's a fellow wandering the, the boards here, one Gil Savage, who refer to the big screen. He finally made it to the big screen. Go get him. Hi, Jack. You know, I don't know how my life would have turned out without you as my teacher and as my friend. I learned to believe in myself from my time at Kearney because of the opportunities you gave me to find out what I could do. That I could commit to the art and do something well. You inspired the best in me by never expecting anything less. You set the seeds for discipline and for striving for truly understanding the craft. That passion and commitment led me to go for some big competitive challenges, and I ended up winning a full boat scholarship to a fine arts degree theater, thanks to you, Jack. During that time, I got to walk in the shoes of many characters. Each one of them was a lesson. I understand now that it was the greatest education I could have ever hoped for. As things turned out, I had the great good fortune of doing many different kinds of work in my life and to discover passion and interest in other fields as well. But my love for theater, discovered on that auditorium stage, has never left me and has always served me to buoy my spirit and challenge my mind. I've spent some years now having the pleasure of giving back some of the great gifts you gave me. I'm grateful to you for that as well, Jack. You were and are a profoundly great influence on so many people. Thank you from the bottom of my heart for being who you are and for all that you have given me. Thanks, Jack. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we give you Karen Kavanaugh.
shadow To never have sunlight on your face
Fraser, a class of 1974, and I was blessed to be with Jack from uh, fall of 73 through, uh, excuse me, fall of 71 through June of 74. Hi, good evening. My name is Michelle Urquiaga Kyle, and I went to Kearney from 1967 to 1970. Mm -hmm. We were the first human beings to see a man on the moon. Better yet, to see Woodstock. We started to lose actual friends and family to the war and to the drugs of the day. The Jackson Five arrived with We Watch Back. While we rocked out with a whole lot of love from Led Zeppelin at Woodstock, we riffed with Jimi Hendrix after looking for Proud Mary. And we all decided to listen up to the Beatles and come together right now over me. We danced the funky chicken, the funky jerk, and the funky Broadway. You're a good dancer. We were all funked up. <laughs> the Smothers Brothers show, can <laughs> show got canned, and uh, Star Trek wasn't renewed. But laughing was in its heyday. Romeo and Juliet was the third Shakespeare featuring Forrest Buckman, Louise Newberry, Mike Shaw, Ray Lewis, Paul Cantrow, Chris Ardias, Mike Finney, and Jim Lawler. Jack said it was one of his best Shakespeare productions. Our Town was another classic and classically done and directed by Jack Winans. Standouts were Terry Coons, Michelle Urquiaga, Tom Sally, Jan Reynolds, Tom Schaefer, Guy Kisgard. Of Mice and Men and Chamber Music, both brought home superior ratings at the Mesa Scene competition. 1969 to 70, Apollo 13 makes it barely back to Earth Alive. The Kent State Massacre shocks all of us. And four days later, 100,000 people protest in Washington, D.C. We held on to a bridge over troubled waters and decided to go with the John and Paul and let it be. Santana had us looking for the black magic woman, and Elton John presented us with your song. We were free souls, and our dancing proved it. For lack of a better term, we gave it the name Free Form. It was kind of a cross between a bee attack and blind man's bluff without the blindfold. No wonder we were all ready for disco. Spoon River was the first show done with the audience on the stage. Jack wanted to let us try everything, expose us to it all, all. It made for a small, intimate space, which helped to have sold out shows. An excellent production featuring some new, terrific talent in Nina Midlam, Terry Kuhn, and Guy Kuskarn. Janet McCarthy, John Arias, Kerry McDonald. Look Homeward Angel brought together two talents that went on to astound us all, Terry Tom and Randy Rogel with Beth Wilcox. Macbeth brought together a powerhouse of women. I was at Taft Junior High and somebody brought me to see that show and I, I thought, I gotta, I gotta be in drama with Jack Wayans. I was awestruck, awestruck by Macbeth. 
And I got smitten that, that night. I was still at Taft Junior High, and I saw Macbeth blew me away, Jack. <laughs> anyway, um, the powerhouse of women, Terry Tom, also known as Tess Garretson, Nina Midlam, Beth Wilcox, the late, wonderful Beth Wilcox, Michelle Archiaga, along with Peg Deschler and Mike Shaw. The sleepwalking scene was shown on Channel 10. Nina Midlam was one of the best actresses ever on this stage, and she was gripping, and I was first-hand witness as Lady Macbeth. Infancy in competition, a comedy knocked them dead at the state one acts, and Terry Coons took home a scholarship. She was absolutely terrific, but never once was in Jack's drama class. 1970 to 71, Alan Shepard hit golf balls on the moon. A half million people protest the war around the country. In the music, John Lennon helped us imagine a better way. A stairway to heaven took away the pain while the levees ran dry in American pie. We decided that we won't get fooled again. Soul Train was must-see TV, and the dance moves on Saturday morning airing were seen on the dance floor on Saturday night. Hot pants are in. All in the family has us glued to the two, and Meathead and Gloria were us. Archie! <laughs> Arsenic and Old Lace brought out myself, Jean Frazier, and the wonderful late Beth Wilcox, wonderful John Collins in the house here, Sherry Wells, Randy Rogal, Father Chris Maris is in the house. Just some awesome, awesome people. And we took that to the California State Association Festival. We had, as our immediate judge who came to the school, Eric Christmas. Eric Christmas fell in love with that production. And Eric Christmas said that Beth Wilcox and I reminded him of the two waddling fat little geese in The Aristocats. And he loved us. And he gave us a glowing report. But Jack was so incensed by the bad judging at the further after Eric Christmas gave us glowing reports, the rest of them, what do they know, Jack? <laughs> and anyway, Jack wrote them a letter saying that we got screwed and he wanted our entire money, entry money back. <laughs> you tell, give him help, Jack. <laughs> As we would all agree, Jack does not like to lose. <laughs> However, the audience really liked As You Like It. And it had a power cast as well. Randy Rogel, Terry Tong, Nina Midlam, Peg Deschler, Frank Rose, and Bill Bunnell, along with others. His determination to do classics and recognizing that he had some extraordinary talent in his pool, even sometimes when we didn't know it ourselves. He pushed us, Jack. And this led Jack to do Dr. Faustus with Randy Rogel, John Collins, and Mrs. Stoffelsleys, Randy Rogel as Dr. Faustus, Linda Brannon, and I got to be a dancing demon. <laughs> 1971 to 72. Mark Spitz, seven gold medals, made us all proud. Sadly, the terrorist attacks of the Munich Games made us weep once again. The Northridge quake killed people and awoke us to another and new threat. On our brand new cassette players, we heard Helen Reddy roar, I am woman, and then found out that Papa was a rolling stone. <laughs> Stevie Wonder filled us with superstition about the smoke on the water. Our friends sang, let's stay together and lean on me. Jesus Christ Superstar opened on Broadway, and once again, our vision of musical theater was altered forever. And there's people in this room, Jeannie Roder, God bless you. <laughs> that, I wasn't in that production, but I got to witness it, and it was beautiful, I'll never forget it. And you did, that was a mini theater, wasn't it? And we packed out 
the theater. They made, so many students wanted to see that that we couldn't just do it in the little theater. We had to do it in the big theater. That's how good it was. And, um, sorry. <laughs> Greece, Greece was electric and had us jumping. The dance fever was getting us fired up. And we did Greece in one of our variety shows. And Larry Orr and his lovely wife Anne can attest to that. We moved a car onto the stage, up the back doors open. We moved a car on the stage, and we did Grease Lightning. <laughs> Fantastic Two featured Pam Schneider, Victor Treveno, Jeff Sherrill, and Cynthia Alus. And uh, oh, that's a little typo, so I'm just going to correct that. That's Cynthia Clouse. Oh, I'm thank you. <laughs> just, just notice that. That was your era. Yeah, it <laughs> must have been my project. <laughs> Waiting for Lefty competed at State College with Randy Rogel, Sherry Wells, Steve Kirk, and Beth Williams. Randy and Sherry took home scholarships and a superior rating. Jack said it was one of the best he ever did and that we really tore them up that year. Jack started something new this year. Let's hear it for the mini theaters. Tickets were 25 cents to see a condensed version of a play during lunch. May so, I make a correction? <laughs> where's Gil? He says yes or no. <laughs> Tickets were 10 cents. We all stand correct. 10 cents. And so many students came, they actually made more than $700 one year. It began with Cat on a hot tin roof and Tea House on the August moon. The mini theaters became a place for the actors and student directors to have a lab to experiment and to grow on their own. It was a fabulous opportunity for them and a terrific innovation. It would go on for years. And I have to insert that this exposed other students who were not drama students to classic plays that they got to see firsthand that they might not have otherwise. And that might have inspired them to go back and read the whole play or go to see a production themselves. So it wasn't just us that benefited firsthand from those many theaters. It was the whole student body who came to see those many theaters. 1972 to 73, the endless odyssey that was Watergate taught us all about just how dirty, dirty politics could be. The U.S. pulled out of Vietnam, but no cheers, only tears. The oil embargo had us all in line for what was 35 cents a gallon the year before. And the vice president convicted of tax evasion. We wanted to take the midnight train to Georgia. <laughs> We were living for the city and saying, let's get it on. But the answer from Aerosmith was, dream on. Since you're so vain that it's killing me softly. <laughs> Heavy metal punk rock started to emerge and the roots of disco were starting thump and bump. And meanwhile, we worked hard to see how many of us could get into a telephone booth at one time. Doing that back in the 50s too. The Exorcist was big, along with The Sting, Serpico, The Way We Were, and American Graffiti. You were pretty much either a jock, a surfer, a soch, or a hippie. A wannabe star of some sort, or, uh, well, the rest of it didn't really matter, did it? Obviously, we and Jack had some pretty amazing years by that time, with some fabulous talent doing a level of theater that made Kearney a theater powerhouse. This year was going to take the whole experience to an even higher level. This year we would win every competition we entered. We were unstoppable and riding at the top of our game. Started with Hamlet. The process of creating the show was shot in film, which we'll see in a moment. We took the show to Cal State Northridge and we won. We, I happen to know, uh, of all the Southern California high schools, this was our CIF, just to give you an idea, of all the Southern California high schools. It was Kearney High School, Northridge High School, and Hollywood High School, the top three schools. 
And our blue trophy is in that trophy case there. That's our CIF, huh, Jack? You betcha. We showed them. The leads in that were the late, wonderful Steve Kirk, who played Hamlet. And with Debbie Stark, Sophia, I, I played Gertrude. John Perpich was, played the king. Jeff Sherrill, Ken Adamson, Larry Orr, Father Chris Maris. And that, just an amazing experience, us going to Northridge. In Death of a Salesman, John Perpich knocked everyone out of their seats with a powerful and nuanced Willie Loman. Other excellent performances came from Steve Kirk, Pam Schneider, Mark Hoagland, Mike London, and Ted Phillips. A View from the Bridge featured Steve Kirk, Jonathan Perpich again, with Ann Jacobson. It cleaned up at the State College and won Steve Kirk a scholarship. It was the last time we went to San Diego State, so we went out on top. The mini theater productions were Beyond the Fringe, Bad Seed, Of Mice and Men, and The Owl and Pussycat, where many of the same names had a chance to explore and find out what they could accomplish. Let's watch some moments from the Hamlet film that Jack inspired this movie to get it made so that others could see how you put a play together. How you, I mean, you can watch him in his element, teaching, choreographing, from, from beginning to the end. And lovely wife, Bobby Emmett. Oh. oh, okay, so we're, I hear we're gonna be seeing that later. Okay. okay. Are you ready for the introduction? Perfect. Should we try and get, we're trying to get uh, John Perpich on the phone. And uh, how are we doing? Hey! Hey, hey JP! Hey! Hey, John! Hey, Jack, how are you, man? It's John Perpich or JP calling you from Arizona. <laughs> Jack, first of all, I just want to say I'm terribly sorry that I'm not able to, able to be present at this wonderful event. I, I want to start by saying congratulations to Jack and hello to all my fellow Kearney alumni, Agang. Yay, John. Yeah, I miss you all. I, I want to tell you, Jack, that I'm always going to be grateful to you for introducing me to this remarkable and magical world of theater. You know, when I first went to Kearney, I was told that Jack Weiner's drama class was kind of a, a mixed class or a cakewalk class. <laughs> so all you had to do was play Jack the entire hour. So I said, what the hell? Sure, I'm up for it. I signed up for it. But on that very first day, he told us that we'd have to get up on that stage. What a shot, drama class. <laughs> <laughs> and I felt my, so much blood run full because you see that the year before I failed my ninth grade speech class because I absolutely refused to speak in front of people. I was terrified. So I panicked and I, I tried to get the hell out of there and unfortunately for me, or fortunately, actually, there was just no place else to go. The classes were all full by then. So starting this class and Jack instructs us to prepare and interrupt for the following day. It's kind of an oxymoron if you ask me, but the hell. So, I crawl up, I go home that night, and I, I put this thing together, and I come back the next day, and it's my turn, and I crawl up on that little mini theater stage with my knees knocking, and I do this sort of Jackie Gleason, poor soul, hobo kind of thing, and I, I'm scared to death, and then I felt this, the oddest thing start to happen. I start to settle into this a bit, and then the most amazing rush runs through my head. And from that moment, it was on. Awesome. And the rest for me is history, Jeff. So I want to thank you. And I want to thank you for forcing me out of my little comfort zone and launching me on this incredible journey and all during the course of my life. And I'm also very grateful that you had the courage or the audacity to ask young teenagers to attempt to bring to life such great masters as Arthur Miller and 
Tennessee Williams, William Shakespeare, and you gave me the opportunity to play Willie Holman, a tragic 53-year-old man whose son was setting after a lifetime of struggle and anguish, and I was a mere 16, wide-eyed, full of hope and still of hurt. <laughs> Uh, that's the first that incredibly daring or downright foolhardy. But either way, thank you, Jack. Thank you for helping me to fall in love with great giants of theater. And I thank you for your passion, your care, and for your direction, Jack. I hope it's a terrific night for you. And I'm really glad I got a chance to chime in. Thanks, everybody. Have a wonderful evening. <laughs> Randy Rogel, up until just like days ago, was really thinking he was going to be able to be here. And he emailed me that he was going to fly down this morning from Vancouver. Um, how can we, oh gosh, how can, how can you preface Randy Rogel? Um, very humble man, uh, but extreme, extreme genius talent. And I have to, to say that he encouraged me and just a brilliant man, and Jack giving him so many wonderful opportunities spurred him on. And now, not only does he have a Peabody Award and Emmy Awards, and yeah, I'm a, you look on the back of your kids' uh, Batman videos, and his name's on that. You know, my granddaughter got cast in you know 101 Dalmatians, and I'm looking at this at her script and the music, and it you know, scored by Randy Rogel. <laughs> and he's everywhere in the Animaniacs. He worked for Warner Brothers. He worked for Disney. So without further ado, Randy Rogel for Jack. Hi, I'm Randy Rogel, and I graduated from Kearney High School in 1972. And like all of you here attending this tribute for Jack Winans, I had Jack for a teacher. And all the great teachers I remember from Kearney High School, I remember Jack as the most influential on me because he was my drama teacher. I went on to do a lot of theater and since then I've made a career for myself in television and film as a writer and as a producer and also as a composer. Jack, I'm sorry I couldn't be with you today live there. Unfortunately, I'm, I'm well, fortunately for me, I'm running a television show now, but unfortunately I had to be in Canada on the day of the tribute. So I'm sorry I'm missing being with you there. Uh, and a tribute that's most well deserved. Uh, the thing, of all the things I remember you did for me, Jack, the one I remember the most, or the biggest influence that you had on me, was to expose me to the classics. I mean, where else was a 17-year-old kid going to expo get exposure to Shakespeare, to Marlowe, to Eugene O'Neill, to Tennessee Williams, to Arthur Miller? And I want to thank you for introducing me to all that long-haired stuff. Uh, as a little anecdote. Uh, I went on uh, to work on one of the series of Warner Brothers that uh, dealt with history. And so I decided I was going to write a song for the kids that included all the plays of Shakespeare, because that's what Jack Winans taught me. And as a lovely little side note, that song went on to win this Annie Award, which is basically the Emmy Awards of animation, uh, in the area of music. And it was a song that included all the plays of Shakespeare and a little blurb about them. And it was definitely inspired by Jack Winans. So in tribute to you today, Jack, I'm going to play a little bit of that song. I won't play the whole thing because it's too long for this, but I think this is something you might enjoy. A play by William Shakespeare always simulates your thought because you spend two hours trying to figure out the plot. He wrote famous lines and phrases for his dog, like out damn spot. So who is this guy that critics praise, who's famous for his turn of phrase, wrote 37 different plays, and lived in Elizabethan days, and made Lawrence Olivier's career, lend me your ear. He lived in Stratford on Avon, apartment to be, was it to be or not to be? I really don't know, it's confusing to me. How do you understand Shakespeare with all of the hearts and the hoes and the flowery prose that he writes for men wearing tights? So bring up the lights. 
and let's study the barn. Hamlet's real father is killed by his brother, who now becomes king and then marries his mother. It ends up with everyone killing each other, and that is the story that's told by the barn. Hey, nanny, nanny, na, fun la la, tra la 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 la. Now that song, if you want to hear the rest of that song, you're going to have to go rent the show because it takes too long to sing here. But rest assured, it includes every play written by Shakespeare with a little blurb about it. Once again, Jack, thank you again for all the lives that you've changed, including mine. This is a day most well deserved by you for a life very well lived. Again, I'm sorry I can't be there with you, but I certainly am in spirit. Best to you and Bobby. Congratulations, and I love you. We're discussing now is for Jess. Okay. This is um, all ad lib, so bear with me. But um, I remember Terry Tom. I was a senior and she was a sophomore. But she struck me as an extraordinary young woman at that time. And then years later, I've learned she is a famous author. She is a physician. And um, I remember her most as being a stage manager and also as one of the witches for. Yes. She's a wonderful person, and unfortunately she's not here, but we have a tribute from her. I'm Tess Garretson, known as Terry Tom in my high school years. I wish I could be there with you right now, but I'm on book tour, so I'm just going to record this tribute to Jack. Uh, I was a 10th grader when I first walked into the mini theater and met Jack Winans. It was the beginning of a long and beautiful friendship. Jack, you were more than a teacher. For many of us, you were a father. And for many of us, drama wasn't just a class. It was a big, flamboyant family. Some of us came alive only on stage, and you made each and every one of us feel we belonged there, as long as we learned our lines. Um, here are the some of the things I remember. I remember your laugh, somewhere between um, a silly giggle and a horse's whinny. Uh, I remember rehearsals for Macbeth, when I played the first witch, and we couldn't come up with a way to make the witches disappear. Uh, we tried flashbangs and smoke, uh, but it didn't hide our clumsy scrambling off stage. And then you came up with this uh, amazing solution. You said, witches just turn around. It turned out that the ingenious costumes that Bobby had designed blended in perfectly with the background, and that's how we disappeared on stage. And I remember the long hours you devoted to each and every production. I remember rehearsals that went so disastrously wrong that we all thought, this will never work. Um, and yet, by opening night, it always seemed to work out. And that was how you taught us that success was a matter of grit and teamwork and a large dose of, oh hell, just open the curtain. It's been 40 years since I graduated from high school. Um, I still have my, some of my little drama trophies. They're falling apart now. Um, I'm a novelist living a long way from San Diego, but you're still with me, Jack. And because of the lessons you taught me, the world you opened up, and all the ways that you inspired me to be a better writer, you will always be with me. We forget, we forget sometimes how important teachers are to us, but I've never forgotten how important you are to me. So thanks, Jack, and congratulations. to introduce Jeannie. She has been working for Alaska Airlines in groups, meetings, and vacation sales for over 13 years. Jean and her husband Robert have performed in and directed dinner theater, main stage full productions with their church and Christian drama ministries. 
She also has the Actors Call to Serve at New Life Church in Renton, Washington. They do Christian comedy shows at The Corridor, a type of Christian coffee house nightclub. Post Kearney, after auditioning and being accepted at New York's University Stella Adler School of Performing Arts, Jean was very disappointed that she was unable to go because of a lack of funds. However, she studied theater and communications, TV, film, and radio production at San Diego State. Jean hosted the Dixie Hour radio show at KSDS Jazz 88.3 FM for eight years. She has been married for 24 years, and she and her husband now reside in Seattle. Yes, San Diego City College for many years. And how do you thank the man who introduced you to Shakespeare? How do you thank the God who introduces you to Tennessee Williams, Eugene O'Neill? I can't thank you enough, Jack, for opening whole new worlds for me and countless other students at this school. The opportunities that you gave us, the things that you saw in us that we didn't see in ourselves, that you believed in us, and you held us to a higher standard than we thought we could reach. You didn't treat us like a bunch of high school kids. You treated us like professionals. You expected us to be like professionals. And that attitude won us award after award after award. I have it on good authority that Annette Benning, who went to Patrick Henry High School, asked her parents if she could get transferred to Kearney High School because they always win. <laughs> because we beat her in the Mesa College competition once again. <laughs> Annette Benning, the award, Academy Award winner, she wanted to be in Jack's class. She knew what a wonderful program we had here. And I thank you for when I was a sophomore, you took a shot on a sophomore, and you gave me a lead part in our and Old Lace, and played Aunt Martha, and we took that, and we went on, and we won first place with that that year for comedy, and our comedy entry. And the speech competitions. You said, Jeannie, I want you to go out for oral interpretation. Go, What's oral interpretation? You know, I'm a sophomore, you know, <laughs> 15, 16 years old. And you're like, you can do this, you can do this. And, and Randy Rogel, bless his heart, let me watch him do his, that I would have a clue what it was. But Jack didn't just teach all of us theater and drama. He taught us speech communications. This is, you know, oral interpretation, problem-solving discussion. Uh, the, the debate team was part of that. Uh, forensics. Didn't know what that was. It pros. I didn't know what that was before I met this man. And the, the second year, I, I got second place overall for forensics. And then uh, my senior year, because you helped me, I got third place. John Perpich got first. I mean, we're talking the whole, all San, San Diego City High Schools and uh, at the Mesa College competitions we had. And John and I were, you know, that John got first and, and I got third. And I was so proud. I was just, you know, because you believed in me. And uh, got to, I got to play one of the minor roles, you know. I, I got to, you, could, you let me see it all, do it all. And like I said, with the mini theaters, it wasn't just us getting... We weren't just sitting in the classroom reading cliff notes, you know? We were doing it. You said, okay, you're going to do this, and you're going to do this, and, you're gonna, and, you're, and you held us to a standard. And so it not only blessed us, and gave us a vast, wonderful education of theater and opened whole new worlds to us. It wasn't just two main productions a year in cliff notes. It was many theaters, live performances, exposing us to countless classic plays. I'll never forget that. I can't put a price on that, Jack, what you did for me and opened that world for me. And all the other students who weren't even drama students, you got to come to the mini theaters. And, and, and they're all going, wow. My younger brother this morning, who had no interest in drama, but he's like, oh, I don't know what to think. And his friend talked to me and he goes, that, they 
they were really good. And I, so he says, I never missed another one after that. And so these were unique things that Jack did. And one of the things you had always talked about when the movie Cabaret came out was, let's do a dinner theater, let's do a supper theater. And we didn't get to do it while I was here, although we did do the Elizabethan Fair, remember? And uh, that, was, that was great fun, a little departure from what we normally did as a prelude before Hamlet. But my husband and I took that idea. I said, I remember Jack kept talking about doing a dinner theater. My husband and I did a, a dinner theater for eight years, directed and ran a dinner theater for eight years. And that was, I learned that from you. I got that from you, Jack, and I thank you for that. Because so many people came and loved it and had a good time. And I thank you for that. I got that idea from you. And the variety shows, oh my goodness, it's just being a part of, you know, we, we did Shakespeare, we did drama, we did comedy, <coughs> and the variety shows where we could put it all together and do different performing arts. And um, see Kim Olsen in the audience who directed a wonderful variety show, Come Alive, Big Bird, we did Sesame Street. And Johnny was, what, four years old? And he just loved it when Big Bird came out. Melinda Hollis came out as Big Bird. And we had Oscar the Grouch. And it was, just, it was just the best, just the best, to see that we could do children's theater too. That we could, he showed us everything and made us believe in ourselves that we could do everything. And I'd be remiss if I didn't talk about one of the hardest lessons I learned was uh, he cast me and Larry Orr in a mini theater. Miss Julie, and it was one of those weeks, you know, I had term papers due and this and that and whatever, and Larry and I were thinking, yeah, we can, we can figure, we can, you know, we're, you know, I'd had a lead part, you know, I'm like full of myself, and thinking, oh, I could go through this. Didn't prepare well enough. I had a great costume, though, Bobby, I looked good. <laughs> and we bombed. We bombed so bad that this man's giving everybody your money back at the door. You're like, I get their money back. <laughs> was humiliated. It was the worst humiliation of my entire life. And I'm never doing drama again. I quit, I quit, I quit. You know, and, and Jack and John Purpich and Larry. <laughs> come on, Jeannie, don't be a chicken. Everybody, come on, you can do this. And, and you encouraged me. You didn't give up on me. You encouraged me to get back in the saddle. And you had me do another mini theater. Get back on the horse, Jeannie. <laughs> And you wrote in my annual, there's no excuse for preparation, but you've got talent, and you believed in me. And so I overcame that humiliation, and I came back, and we did countless many theaters after that that were successful, and I had them all my lines. <laughs> Fiddler on the Roof, and on and on. And, uh, and then I had the most wonderful opportunity of doing Gertrude. Changed my life, that, uh, that experience. And I talked about how that was our CIF, and, and the times that you, ex you helped us go to see Shakespeare. Was, the first time I ever got to go to the Old Globe was because of you. You made that opportunity for us. Took us all to the Old Globe. We saw Midsummer Night's Dream. You know, what kind of teacher goes to that extent? To t you, you took us to some, somebody who was making a film and, 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 and a film opening. You wanted us to experience that. You went far above any teacher I have ever known, Jack. And I will be eternally grateful. And my husband and I help teach uh, people who think they can't act and people that don't have confidence in themselves. And I learned from you. And we just work in community theater and church theaters, but we... I get to teach. And I have to... My last thing was um, Pam Snyder and I fought hard for the part of Linda Lohman. <laughs> And for death of a salesman, and uh, and Pam won out, and I got to be the understudy. And so, one of Linda Lohman's lines is, "Respect must be paid where respect is due." So I finally got to see that line on the stage. <laughs> <laughs> Understudies. God bless understudies. And respect is paid here tonight to you, Jack, and Bobby, 
Oh my gosh, Bobby, you always made us look so good. And all the competitions, everybody raved, Where did, who does their costuming? And we won awards for our costumes. This woman could make and remake a costume and stuff. And one year I came back and I said, Bobby, I lost all this weight, isn't that great? She goes, oh, I gotta go redo my measure. We gotta measure you again. <laughs> but we looked great. You always made us look so great. So, Jack, from the bottom of my heart, I thank you and Bobby for everything you did for me and stuck for me for a lifetime. Thank you. Michelle Urquiaga, since uh, leaving Kearney High School, initially lived for 10 years in Mexico City with her husband and two children. While there, she attended the International University, focusing on liberal arts, and volunteered in clinics for the disabled and collaborated with the National Committee on the Prevention of Child Abuse. Upon returning to California, she studied nursing and graduated with honors from San Diego State. stage that brought me such a lifelong love of the theater. I guess I'm the crybaby artist. <laughs> but I'm delighted to have this opportunity to thank you and reminisce. Those three years at Kearney were filled with learning the art of acting from you, a master communicator. You demonstrated a deep respect not only for the craft, but also a deep respect for the capabilities of your students. As I think back, as many others have already stated, I am so amazed that we were barely 15 or 16 when you introduced us to William Shakespeare, August Strindberg, Edgar Lee Masters, Federico Garcia Lorca. Then, with those complex plays, you entered Kearney into acting competitions. As a result of your tireless preparation, Kearney was always a force to be reckoned with. I will never forget your kinetic energy during those rehearsals and the electrifying performances rendered by your student actors in the tournaments. Often victorious, as we've heard, we came away with a sense of pride and accomplishment. Being a winner in two of those competitions was a thrill that resonates with me to this day. I will be forever grateful to you for the many hours you dedicated to us in the classrooms, in the competitions, in this auditorium. I cherish every moment I spent here. I thank you for those moments, which, like you, are unforgettable. Yeah. We, uh, we were in another play together a few years ago at uh, North Coast Repertory Theater called Defying Gravity. And as you may know, Jack uh, does not hesitate to express his opinion. And um, Sean Murray was the director there at the time, uh, the AD, but he wasn't directing the play. So he comes in at the last minute and says, you know, to do good to and, and Jack and Sean have this disagreement over how the part should be done. And a few days later, someone else is doing Jack's role. And I'm going, what happened here? What happened? I put it down to Jack's just knowing more than Sean did. <laughs> I brought you something, Jack, which I was um, hoping to say is a special thing from the Shakespeare Society, but it isn't. <laughs> <laughs> because you're not done there yet. We want you to do more readings and more performances and help us more. So this is a keepsake for this night for the play that you and I did together. A little postcard of, of Mice and Men. It has a little picture here. You can even keep the fancy wrapper that it, <laughs> uh, 
from the Shakespeare Society and from myself, Jack. It's a marvel working with you. You deserve all of these praises, I'm sure. Uh, <laughs> even though I wasn't here, just from having my Thank you very much for everything. I don't take my hat off for anybody except maybe God. But for you, I take my hat off to you. Wonderful. Okay, folks, let's take a break. Go get some, uh, some refreshments, and we'll see you back here in about 12, 15 minutes. Thank you.